be on here. Um, so I'll go ahead and call to order. What time is it? Is there somebody got the time? 533. Five All right. So 533 on December 3rd, 2020, which is a Thursday. Uh, I'll call the Woodman Hills Metropolitan District Special Board meeting to order. Um, item two will be roll call. John Martin present. Neil Erickson present. Casey Popovich present. And Troy Stinson present. And we'll give time to see if uh, Sherry calls in, but we do have four. That's a quorum. Uh, we'll go ahead and move forward with the meeting. Um, item three is president's welcome and remarks, uh, rules of conduct. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm on my phone for some reason. I have this computer that doesn't like me, and uh, at least for Zoom meetings. So I'm going to go ahead and use my phone. And uh, so I can't see who all's on here, but welcome to the meeting. Um, we're trying to keep this short and sweet tonight. Uh, we do have the budget hearing with the, uh, I believe this is going to be the final version of the budget um, coming up here later in the meeting. And then we also have some folks from, I believe, D.R. Horton and Grandview Reserve here um, to speak to us a little bit about uh, what their plans are out here in Falcon. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, it's been a rough week. I think we're uh, everybody's kind of ready to get in the holidays, but not happy about the COVID shutdowns and everything else. Um, I apologize for my attire, but I'm still in a back brace. So um, this is what uh, covers it up so that you don't have to see it. But uh, and uh, so we'll go ahead with that and uh, get started here tonight. see item four approval of agenda make a motion to approve the agenda as is stated okay i'll second okay so i have a motion to approve by neil and a second by stacy is there any other discussion on it okay nope. no further discussion uh Call a roll. All those in favor of approval of the agenda. Aye. 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 Uh, motion carries for O. Oh. And we'll move to item five, which is the Grandview proposal. Go ahead and introduce yourself. And if you guys want to let us know what you guys got going on. Sure. Sure. This is Paul Howard. I'm with uh, Foresight Investments. And uh, we have the land. I think everybody got the package we sent over. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, the county is very excited about this as well. We've got 765 acres roughly out off Eastonville and Highway 24 uh, that we have got a sketch plan approved with the county for 3,200 units, uh, give or take. And I mean houses in terms of units. And uh, the county is, uh, like I said, very excited about this corridor and very supportive of the plan. And uh, we are connecting, as you can see, Rex Road to Highway 24 from Meridian Ranch which will be a big improvement from the east-west corridors. And it'll go just north of the new uh, park that the county put in out there on Eastonville. Eastonville will be improved as well. And I'm not gonna go through this whole thing in detail at all, but just wanted to give you some of the highlights. So um, we are currently, uh, looking for sewer solutions for the property. And uh, obviously we, we thought of you and uh, uh, DR Horton, uh, we're under contract with them for the entire parcel. And so they are on the call uh, with us as well. Uh, but we do wanna pursue uh, solutions with you, understanding that we're, the, the contributions to the plant, the financial commitment on taps 
all of that. And I'll let uh, Derek speak more to that. Uh, but DR Horton understands that. And obviously they're very capable of doing that. So uh, that's kind of where we are. Is there any questions on the sketch plan at all before I turn it over to Mr. Hoffman? Okay, let's make it short and sweet, right, Troy? Uh, okay, so uh, I'll turn it over to, I'd like to introduce Derek Hoffman. He is with DR Horton and uh, he is here to kind of we, we'd like to walk away. This is what we'd like to walk away with from the meeting with you. Uh, if possible is just, yeah, let's, you guys are interested in pursuing an agreement that uh, we can work with Jerry on in more details and then bring back to you. So that's that's what we're, we're looking for is, is if there's a level of interest there to partner. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Derek Hoffman with DR Hort. All right. Uh, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, thanks, everyone, for allowing us to uh, participate in this meeting, albeit virtually. Hopefully, there comes a time where we can meet each other face to face. Um, as Paul said, my name is Derek Hoffman, and I handle land acquisitions for DR Horton. Um, so DR Horton is a home builder. That's our business. We build homes. Um, we currently operate in 88 markets in 29 different states. And for the last 18 or 19 years, we've been the largest home builder by volume in the United States. Um, to put that into some context, uh, our last fiscal year, we sold and closed over 65,000 homes across the country. Um, locally, uh, we've been building homes in Colorado since the mid 1990s and continued building homes through the recession. We currently have approximately 140 employees uh, throughout the state. And uh, they service our 25 plus or minus active selling communities. Uh, last fiscal year, we closed about 1,000 homes uh, within the state of Colorado. As Paul uh, said, the purpose of us being here is to express our desire to uh, explore the possibility of partnering uh, with the district uh, for sanitary services for Grandview. Uh, that partnership could include an agreement on some of the existing capacity at the plant but I think also uh, potentially bringing our significant wherewithal to help expand the sanitary facility in the future. Uh, we don't have a specific proposal uh, this evening, primarily because uh, we'd like to spend some more time understanding your long-term goals, your objectives and your needs. Uh, we, Paul and I strongly believe that any proposal that we bring before you needs to include uh, those items and bring them into consideration. Uh, therefore, as Paul said, our, our real request to the board tonight is to authorize Mr. Jacobson to enter into discussions with Mr. Howard and myself so we can work on a framework of a proposal or an agreement uh, that contemplates everyone's needs and requirements. Uh, once we have something together that will have some substance, uh, we'd come back before you, uh, share our kind of plans and visions with you, and then leave it up to you to decide if it's in the best interest of the district uh, to proceed. Um, I, I, in closing, I, I do believe a partnership with DR Horton and the Woodman Hills Metropolitan District would be a win-win uh, solution for everybody. I hope you'll consider giving us a green light to kind of advance and spend some time with Mr. Jacobson uh, to walk through your current facility and understand its current capacity and what your future needs may be. And uh, with that said, as Paul said, we'll keep it short and sweet, and I'd be happy to answer any questions or address any issues that you may have. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Um, Ted, uh, our general counsel's on here tonight. Um, I'll open the floor up for him to speak to uh, what do you need to see, Ted, uh, as far as uh, or what do we need to see to move forward with at least exploring the options with uh, DR Horton and Grandview Reserve? Um, if y'all, sure. If y'all, am I, I'm on? You're on. Okay. Um, is your thought initially to seek to have the land included uh, in the district or is your thought to uh, in some manner kind of uh, rent, if you will, uh, capacity in the facility for sewer? I think the initial thought would be that we would be outside of the district. We will have a metro district uh, actually four metro districts set up 
across this piece for different geographic and zoning purposes. So just based on that, our thought would probably be to be out of the district, but uh, I'll let uh, Derek uh, respond to that as well. I mean, we can look at options. Yeah, I think ultimately the form would probably take some sort of IGA and uh, where uh, Horton would be utilizing services out of the sanitary facility in exchange for, you know, obviously not paying for taps and helping fund the cost of expansion, things of that nature. All right, well, it sets a base direction to which way do we sort of go. Mm -hmm. All right, and y'all are planning to form, as I heard, four special districts, four uh, metropolitan districts within the 700 and some acres? Yes, we'd have uh, three residential districts, but they'd be on different phases of the land. And then there would be, and it's primarily set up for funding and development purposes by phase. And then we would have one commercial district, uh, which would be down around uh, Rex Road and Highway 24. Okay, do you, uh, as you do one of these projects, do you do it with bonds or do you do it with the commercial financing? Uh, so when we uh, do these uh, types of projects, uh, we typically fund them all internally. So all the development capital comes um, off of DR Horton's balance sheets. Um, we don't uh, seek outside financing or we don't uh, pursue outside lenders or loans uh, for any of our projects. Wow, <laughs> that's a hell of a balance sheet. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, that's impressive. Okay, so so no bonds, internal financing. Yes, sir. Um, is it a fair question? This is kind of grabbing the moon. Any sense of what kind of dollars this thing is going to require? Well, that's I think what we'd like to, uh, in terms of Grandview or the sanitary facility or what. Um, no, the project itself. Well, I mean, the project. It's, um, it's, Five year, a ten year, a twenty year build out. You know yeah. that kind. Of well, with 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 um, thirty two hundred units, it's going to take some time. And sure. uh, how quickly we get to the, to sell that three thousand two hundred sixty first unit, I'm not exactly sure. A lot, the market will have a lot to say about that. But if you look at uh, you know Banyan Lewis, or you look at Meridian, or some of the other big communities kind of around the general area. They typically sell somewhere around 200 to 300 units a year. So I think that kind of gives you an idea of perhaps the types of absorption that we uh, may be seeing. Now, also remember that these are um, happening in, in really strong market times too. So that absorption may change as the market sort of shifts. But, um, you know, the good thing about DR Horton is, you know, once we own this stuff, we own it. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're not, uh, we don't have a lender involved where somehow we would end up giving the keys back to the lender. It's our project, we build it and we stay with it to the end, which is uh, um, a little bit different than the way some people do it. So if I understood there for a moment, uh, what you just said, the build out would be potentially two to 300 a year? Uh, yeah, I think based on absorption at other projects around the area, I think that's a fair assumption. All right. and. The uh, sewer capacity, let me back into this. You're aware that we have a new facility? I am. Okay. And um, has anybody, I don't know if this is a question to you or to Jerry, has anybody sort of determined whether its current structure, I'll call it that, or capacity um, is sufficient for a two to 300 a year absorption or uh, is there any guesstimate that they're going to have to add to the plan to meet this obligation? I, I, I'll, I'll take a shot at that answer, but I certainly would let your experts weigh into it. It's my understanding that the facility would have to go through a future expansion in order to handle all of the sanitary services that we're contemplating at Grandview. And so I think that would definitely be a major part of this type of arrangement that we're talking about is how can we use that as you said, impressive balance sheet to kind of help fund some of those costs and bring some of our infrastructure to bear to help fund those future expansions. So part of the analysis would be at what point, how far in the future, one year, 20 years, do they need to expand the facilities to handle this growth? Correct? I would say that's correct. And that's what we really want to get a better understanding about. I'm sure that your team of experts has spent a lot of time 
evaluating options and strategies and probabilities and timing. I'm sure they've got a lot of cost information, at least in their head, of what these things might cost. It's that type of thing that we want to start to get to, into the weeds on. And, and Jerry, I think, off the top of his head, knows most of those answers. I'm sure he knows all of it. <laughs> Jerry? All right, this is John. Night, but John. Um, what? As you guys know, Jerry, I think, is in the hospital. Oh, right. But Jerry asked me to be on tonight. So um, I guess the expert is in the room. Um, 3,200 units is, um, and I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of outline and, uh, on this, because there are a lot of answers, you know, that there, there are a lot of questions that haven't been answered yet. Um, but 3,200 units is roughly the equivalent of Woodman Hills build out. So this is a very, very substantial undertaking and, uh, the plant, would be requiring through the period um, a significant hydraulic organic expansion and during the same time frame as I think uh, uh, most of you are aware we're going to be wor working through reg 31 and reg 41 activities as well so um, this such a, a an agreement um, is is not going to be like a Falcon Fields guys. This is going to be a fairly uh, complicated agreement uh, with a very substantial amount of financial um, uh, financial inputs from the developer. And you know, right now, although we certainly have envisioned certain expansions and looked ahead to Reg 31, Reg 41, you know, we certainly haven't been in the mode that that we've taken this thing through doubling plant capacity at this point. So these discussions um, that would be, and, and of course, just to back up real quick, you guys are um, the designated regional uh, wastewater provider. So uh, per the 208, you are the designated agency. That doesn't necessarily uh, require you to serve them um, but uh, it, it does, uh, it, you know, mean that we probably should be talking to them. The discussions themselves are going to entail some, um, uh, some significant uh, engineering and legal um, uh, uh, development I'm anticipating. Uh, so it's not something that's going to happen in the next 15 minutes. And some of the answers that are being asked for are not readily available in Jerry's head and, and some of them not even readily available in my head. So uh, we will have to be working through this and providing an outline of what costs have to be spent when. And then of course, uh, Ted, obviously there's gonna be a very substantial assurance and, and contractual arrangements here uh, binding them because certain costs were gonna have to be made upfront in, in many of these instances. So it's not gonna be something that, that we're gonna find, you know, we're gonna have on the table back to you in 15 minutes. But, um, and, and guys, I'm also here to, to answer um, any questions that the board may have as to what this path might look it, like forward on the technical side, but it, it's not a, uh, it's not a deal that will be done tonight. It, it's simply a, you know, it's a discussion to be, to be had. And it may be that board, you may even ask at some point, you know, for uh, the requester and the developer to even provide for some soft costs as we work through this. And that's not unreasonable, but um, that's just a bit of a background. Um, we haven't taken it too much more in depth on that, on the technical side. Uh, I think the, the, the first thing is for the board just to, to decide, do they want to talk or, or where do they want to go from here? I'm going to go ahead and jump back off onto mute guys and then, but I'll jump, I'll be here, Troy, throughout this discussion. You know, if you guys want to hit me up with anything that might come from the board. Well, while, while I've got you on here, John, um, our current capacity, I know we, uh, we nixed the uh, four-way deal here um, in this last year. And I don't want us to get roped into me personally. I don't want us to get roped into another four-way ranch deal, where we're sitting on something for 15 years, and uh, and it never 
comes to fruition and we're binding up uh, whether it's taps in the plant or uh, or where we're at. So um, I just want to make sure that, you know, me personally, I don't have a problem with us entering into, into some into talks. Um, we are designated the regional plant and I would like to see it used as a regional plant and the more uh, service we can provide and customers we can put in there, obviously the better it is for our custom, our current customers in our Metro district. So we welcome, um, um, uh, or at least I, I would welcome the opportunity to, to, for our district to be able to talk to you all and bring you into, into that plant and, and use it and even expand it if we can, um, to make sure we can accommodate the build out out here. Um, I think we're all aware by now that we can't stop the development that's happening in the county. Um, it's going to develop. Um, it's just a matter of uh, what part of that we play in it. And uh, I'm glad you guys came to us um, and are asking the question. And I understand this is going to be a very long process, but uh, I would welcome it, uh, at least me personally, uh, as long as we get uh, get uh, the attorneys involved and make sure that we're getting some soft costs covered and things, I don't want to get into anything where uh, we are on a very tight budget as, as we're getting ready to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, and it sounds like that you guys are ready. What's your plan as far as uh, anticipated build out? Um, I know you said two to 300 homes a uh, year um, and it's what 32 homes 3200 homes total so are you looking at starting and building in two years one year yeah uh, well so uh, first process we have a bunch of work that we need to do with um, with the county and the state um, frankly before we're in a position where we can start to put um, a shovel in the ground um, I would envision right now that we're probably looking at sometime in 2022 of being in a position to start putting foundations in um, and just to take a step back, um, you know, we, we're entering this with our eyes wide open. We understand that the costs associated with uh, taking the facility from where it's at to where it um, would need to go are significant. And um, so I, I don't want anyone to get the um, misunderstanding that somehow we think that this is just going to be uh, simple and uh, frankly inexpensive because we know it's not going to be. Um, in terms of the uh, covering some soft costs to make sure that the district isn't being put into a position where they're expending money chasing a, you know, a hypothetical rate at this point, I I'm fine with that. I think that's a completely fair ask and that's very customary. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, uh, but, um, you know, we stand by, if we can come to an agreement that works, I think for everybody, um, doing this type of development, this scale of development is not outside of our wheelhouse and we do it often. Um, in fact, in uh, a previous life with DR Horton, I worked on a 7,500 unit development. So um, this is something that we know how to do. Uh, we've got the team and experts that know how to execute on something like this. And um, I, I can't speak to what's happened with some of the other projects, but I can promise you this. Um, when DR Horton closes on this land, houses are going to go up. Um, we're not in the business of land banking dirt and sitting on it for 15 years. That doesn't work with our business model. Our investors don't like that. So um, if we close on it, which I, I certainly believe we will, uh, we are going to build rooftops here. And that's, um, uh, and like I said, we've done that consistently even through the recession. We were building uh, hundreds of homes a year, uh, even in, in a down market. I have uh, two other questions, if I may. Go ahead, Ted. Um, one is from Troy's question and your response a minute ago. If I'm understanding, uh, essentially we're looking at two years before a shovel hits the ground. Is, is that fair? That is fair. All right. Second, do you all own, I think from what you just said, uh, you introduced another thing that I forgot to ask you about, <laughs> which I should have. Do you all own the land or is it so? Tractor, where you know where is it in the ownership phase? Right. So Paul uh, Foresight Investments owns the property, and then we will be working together to go through the El Paso County and state process uh, to get all the entitlements in place. Um, my mandate from our investors is that we close on land once it's got some zoning in place. Um, uh, you know, as I'm sure you all are aware, in 2008, 2009. 
uh, home builders got hammered for owning land that they couldn't do anything with uh, and speculating on dirt. So the rules really around our, you know, the way that the investment uh, is structured around um, public home building uh, is really precludes us from closing on land until we have zoning in place. Um, so we'll be working with um, Paul uh, to get that zoning in place. Once it's in place, we'll close on the land and then it's going to take probably close to a year to get all of the infrastructure in place, roadways in place. Um, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't the, you close on and you start building homes right away. There's a lot of drainage channel improvements that need to happen. And um, a lot of work that needs to have, um, you know, lift station, because obviously to get to your plant is going to require force main. So there's quite a bit of work that's going to have to happen on site before we put the first, uh, first hole in the ground for a foundation. Well, All right. and I'll, I'll I would, uh, also just wanted to let you know that timing wise, uh, you know, we're looking at probably a development plan approval in mid to late summer of next year. So that would be kind of the timing of DR Horton taking ownership at that point. Does that answer your question? I think so. Um, when okay. you say uh, you can have a scenario where there's a developer who owns the, the dirt and then brings in a series of builders, you know, to build out. Um, you, you can have, you know, three, four, five builders within a subdivision scenario, or I think I'm hearing here. Uh, I'm sure I'm hearing here that won't happen here. This is one builder, uh, Dr. Horton, uh, and you all will be the landowner. Except, I think I'm hearing you say they will become the landowner. They're not just a builder. That that is correct. They will own the land and take it from there and develop it. Dr. Horton will buy all the land, develop it, and then they will build all the homes. All right, and you all own the land now? We own the land now, correct. Okay, thank you. That's That covers my questions. Good. Uh, any other questions, board members, any other questions for? I've just got one question, which is uh, more for Derek. So DR Horton is planning on doing the 3,200 unit set. That's not gonna be subdivided with other builders? Um, so there always exists the possibility if the county requires us or um, as part of our plan approval, they want us to construct a product that we don't build, um, then we may sell lots to other builders. For instance, there's been some conversations as part of the sketch plan of building, um, of having as buffers some larger lots, half acre, um, larger lots, typically not something that we build, um, but there are people in the market um, that do. And so there may be some uh, lots that are available to other builders. Um, but even in that instance, DR Horton would be the master developer, master builder in, uh, in the community. Um, right. So then you would own the land and you would actually, not so much subcontract, but you could sell off your parcels um, to those particular builders based on that, that routine. Yeah, I will tell you my experience with DR Horton, we really don't like selling building lots to other builders. Um, we'd like to build them ourselves. That's sure. Our but sometimes we're, you know, uh, you know how this process goes in zoning and dealing with uh, plan commission. Sometimes they want to see certain things that we just can't accommodate, but we can find partners to do that and other builders to do that. Right. Well, yeah. And the reason why I'm asking that question is based on looking at the build out of Wolf Ranch and uh, Kuchara, you know, uh, and, and Banning Lewis, and that's still continuing to go on today. So, Correct. you know, they've got uh, quite a few different different developers and different builders that are in those particular areas. So, and this is a um, quite a large piece of land, you know, that's fairly comparable to, to Banning Lewis on on their their first, second, and third phases that they're going through right now. So, okay. Yeah. Well, and Neil, just to respond, uh, follow up on Derek's comment, uh, looking at the site plan, which Oh, wow, I just happen to have right in front of me here. Uh, there's only 272 lots out of the 3,200 that are half acre type lots that may be a product they wouldn't build. So, uh, you know, they're going to build the bulk of it, 98%. They're going to be the people you're dealing with, okay? That so was the point of my question. A few minutes small ago. Question. I'm sorry, what? I say that's the point of my question a few minutes ago that we were talking about. Yeah. Up yeah. With the developer and then various builders coming in. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
and Any I other? also could I, could I just say one more thing? You you brought up the issue uh, with Waterbury. I I have some knowledge of just rough knowledge of what went down there. Uh, in in this, there's no comparison. I mean, you've got we you've got Dr. Horton as a partner on this, and 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 we're a partner on this. So I I know that left a bad taste in your mouth. I don't blame you for that at all. I just want you to understand this is Dr. Horton would be your capital partner in this situation. Um, actually, it does prompt another question and. Uh, <laughs> Troy re sort of referred to it a few minutes ago. You all have the capacity. This balance sheet is just fascinating to me. Do you have the ability to post, I'll call it a bond, a, you know, surety or something at the front end so that uh, the district is, is comfortable that you have the ability at the back end to finance what it is you want to do? We sure. don't end, we yeah. enter a contract and two years later, you guys still don't have the money kind of thing. Oh, understood. And, um, yeah, absolutely. So we issue, you know, we put up bonds and, and other um, financial guarantee mechanisms all the times with our development. And, um, you know, we don't, you know, we don't like to kind of gloat about our size, but um, it, I can see it's, um, you know, everyone wants to make sure that we have the wherewithal. And I think if you go and were to pull our financial statements from the end of our fiscal year, I think our fiscal year, our last fiscal year ended at the end of September. And on our balance sheet between cash and marketable securities, we had about two and a half billion dollars worth of cash on our balance sheet. So, uh, not question: Are you publicly traded? We are. Yes, okay. on the Nasdaq. I'm sorry, on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. with, with this kind of size of project, it, your skill set is commensurate with the size of the project. Right. Um, if it was if it was myself and a partner building homes, um, yeah, I wouldn't even <laughs> wouldn't even wade into these waters. Um, but it's something like I said, we've got a team that knows how to do these. We do these types of projects um, quite often. Um, and the, the other good thing about Dr. Horton and our size is that we have the capability of pulling in expertise from all around the country. So any issue that comes up or product that we need, I and mean, we've got a vast um, army of people that have uh, very specific expertise that we can bring to bear on, on any project at any place across the country. So it's a good resource to have, frankly. It is. <laughs> any other questions? I watched, I watched their presentation to the county commissioners a couple months ago, and I was pretty impressed with um, everything I saw there. I was kind of worried about one of their presenters, but I think he had something to do with the last deal we had going on that didn't work out. But I thought their whole presentation was pretty impressive, and I think it would be a good thing for our community to get involved with. Thank you, John. Thank oh, you. where are you your water? We have water. We have our own water. OK. Uh, what, do, what do we need to do, Ted? Um, um, you, I don't know that you really need a motion per se. You can give a sense of the committee uh, that you're interested, in, if this is what you decide, that you're interested in going forward and exploring this opportunity. It's not a, it's not a motion committing the district to do anything. It's just a sense of the district, which is the same thing I think they're seeking. Yes, yes. All right. I know I, I, I am interested in pursuing. Uh, I, I, I'm very much under the presumption that the more customers we have in that plant, the better off our community is. So um, you might do an informal poll, uh, Stan, uh, Troy, listen to me. Neil, what do you think? Um, I think we should move into negotiations and uh, take a look and see what this opportunity brings. John? Well, I kind of just said it a minute ago, I'm definitely for it. The The only thing that has it has been brought up, but now that we're going to move forward from here, if that's what we decide to do, we are going to incur costs. So what do we have, what do we have to do in order to make sure that those costs are covered going forward from tonight? That's a fair thought, John. I like it. 
Um, this is John McGinn playing back in. Um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier and Derek uh, seems to be accepting of is that it's not unreasonable for the district to ask for a stipend uh, in terms of some upfront um, soft costs to help cover um, uh, legal uh, pursuant of this but also the technical element, the engineering that is gonna go into projecting what has to happen when and what those costs are likely to be. So I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for um, uh, so, uh, either uh, just a direct check or something like that to the tune of 15, uh, $20,000 that can be drawn upon uh, for Jerry to uh, seek the resources that he might need uh, uh, for Ted, uh, myself, other people, staff, you know, to, to pursue this thing and to provide for the answers, the direction and the parameters that are going to be elements that would have to go into such a deal. So. I don't think it's unreasonable for you to ask for something that can be drawn on that Jerry can use, you know, to help pay for his soft costs that, you know, are, are likely to be expended over the next few months in outlining this deal. Um, and so I don't think that's reasonable for the district, unreasonable for the district to ask. So. And, and I think uh, Derek already alluded to that. We don't think it is unreasonable either. We, uh, we, we agree that we can sit down with Jerry and kind of get an idea what those costs are and I'll let Derek speak, but from our perspective, we understand that and would agree to something like that. And I believe if there's gonna be money changing hands then, and there'll have to be a contract drawn up and we'll have to motion to move forward. Um, Derek, so. what are your thoughts, buddy? Well, I, th I think that's uh, completely fair. Um, you know, as I said, we're, we're, we're not here to be a hindrance on the district. We're not here to ask the district to start spending a bunch of money to chase a solution that we came to you looking to find uh, and discuss. So I think that, uh, John, I think it nailed, hit the nail on the head. I think that's completely fair to ask for that. And I would be supportive of that. Um, so perhaps um, just in terms of next steps, perhaps we need to, maybe John and Jerry can put their uh, heads together and come up with an outline of some money and uh, and what they think would be appropriate. And then um, Ted, maybe we can consult with you to figure out the best way to document that and bring that to the board so they can um, consider it and vote on it. And then we can get, you know, an escrow in place to um, defray some of these costs of, of exploring this. Sure, that, that's fine. If I may, Troy didn't get the rest of the board um, opinion. Yeah, we have uh, we we have four members, but I think uh, since we're going to look at drafting up a contract, in, or at least in moving forward with this, uh, a contract to at least cover soft costs, and and we're engaging our uh, general counsel into those into this uh, negotiations on the contract. We're going to need a motion um, to give approval to move forward with those uh, uh aspects of, of this, uh, at least to move forward with the preliminary contract on the soft costs and moving into negotiations. So uh, you didn't get, you didn't get uh, one board comments. Gotcha. Oh, I'm, I'm good over here. Thank oh. you, no, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, Stacy. <laughs> I would have, I would have spoke up if I had any questions. Thank you. All right. I didn't want you to feel excluded. Oh, I'm not, thanks. Okay. Um, and to back to the other scenario, uh, we can put together something reasonably simple. It's just an exploration uh, with the soft costs uh, involved in that exploration to be handled either by Horton or uh, what other entity. Foresight, right. Okay, and we can uh, probably put it into uh, some type of an escrow account uh, with the ability to draw out of that account as uh, expenses incur are incurred. So you see what the money's going for and, the, and we see that there in fact is a, a pool, if you will, to tap into as necessary. So it, it's beneficial to both sides. Sure. 
So I'm I'm going to uh, put out there and request that uh, uh, to get a motion to approve moving forward in discussion and contract with uh, Grandview Reserve uh, on this, so that we can get contracts in place and use our resources and their resources. So if I'm going to request a motion on that. I'll make a motion that we move forward. I'll second the motion. Okay, so I have a motion by John and a second by Neil. Are there any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving that motion? Aye. 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 Uh, motion carries 4 L. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And we will leave you to with our experts on pursuing this. And we look forward to any updates on progress. So. Thank you for your time, everybody. Sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. John, thank you uh, for speaking in there. I appreciate that. Yeah, I uh, done this a couple times, so um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> down this road. Um, and, um, and, and I think it's important for them to you know, cover that because it, it, this is just for you guys, you know, and, and to have some sense of this thing. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, very, very substantial costs. We're talking about a lot of zeros um, that they would be inputting to this deal. And I mean, it's possible they don't like what we come up with, but um, uh, I guess the, the one good thing is you have somebody out here in D.R. Hort, Horton who has some pretty deep pockets that could write checks uh, and make it happen if they if they um, saw their way to it. But it, it is going to be a, a fairly complex um, agreement I'm anticipating, and it's going to have some pretty very substantial financial triggers and some some pretty darn big upfront checks are going to get written so uh, and without getting into the specifics because we don't know what exactly what the specifics are but i can guarantee you it's going to look you know a lot like that so john the 20 seemed a little light it, it might be light the other thing that typically is done with this kind of thing is you develop the agreement that you start with a 20 and when you get to 15 they're required to put another 20 in the pot is usually how you end up writing these things these okay. soft cost agreements and uh, they kind of like it that way because um there's an off road or there's an off ramp uh and they know that hey they might be paying 60 before it's over but they're only paying 20 at a time. And the agreement states that when the escrow hits 15, the district will present them with a request to put another 20 in and then kind of you keep going. That, that's a pretty typical deal, Ted. Um, and obviously, you know, um, that, that's, that's probably where you start. <laughs> well, we'll let you guys work out those down deals. the road. When you get down the road and the agreement is gonna have, you know, probably uh, some of the, the, the factors they're going to be paying into an agreement is probably going to have eight zeros on it. Just FYI, guys. Okay, you and I will talk offline, John. Yeah, there, there's a lot more to do. Um, and Please do keep us updated um, on the progress there. I'm fairly curious. I watched the county commissioner meetings, so i kind of seen, uh, you know, what they're presenting and how they're presenting it and things. And uh, so it looks like it's it's solid. Um, but I'm sure back 15 years ago, uh, the other agreement looked like it was solid at that time too. So um, just call me a skeptic, but <laughs> when, when they start pouring foundations in the plants uh, at the capacity it needs to be for that, that uh, then, then, I'll be, uh, then I'll be all smiles. Well, that's why you want your soft costs up front because we don't know that we're going to get to the finish line on this. You know, I mean, we may tell them that it's going to cost this much and this much and they don't like our number and, you know, we can't move it. So um, uh, it, it is something that doesn't necessarily have a happy ending uh, for everybody. So I think that's the reason that we want a soft cost cut cost covered here and that's the way I think we approach these kind of things this way.
a little history lesson. I many years ago was heavily involved with the Banning Lewis efforts. So with some experience of things not working out the way everybody had hoped. All right. And with that, we will move on to item six on the agenda, which will be uh, a 2021 budget hearing on the latest pr budget proposal for next year. Uh, uh, Rachel, do you or the treasurer want to lead us off with what we're doing We're here with the budget? And I know we've got some new numbers in here. I can or Stacy can, it's up to her. Go for it, Rachel. Okay, so I think what we have right now is no rate increase in park and rec. Water has a 1.6% rate increase and wastewater has a 3% rate increase. Okay, that's much better than we before. Um, I appreciate the committee looking at the numbers and and working that out. And I understand all parties in the committee are happy with the results. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think they Anybody? put a lot of effort into it, so it's awesome. Just as a footnote, uh, I, I have I've been through the resolutions uh, with Rachel. And we had some minor things to address, but the numbers are all in there. Um, as a result, as, as I understand, Rachel, from the committee's review and various comments, it's it's the complete numbers package, if you will, in those resolutions. Correct. Okay, if, and if there's no other discussion from board members, I'll open it up to the public since it's a public hearing. Okay, uh, anybody wait, in public? Wait. In uh, I was, uh, this is Robert with Paintbrush Hills. I was giving uh, your residents an opportunity to say something first. Um, I'd like to start off my comments with a couple things. Number one is that we're still waiting per the legal agreement between Woodman Hills and Paintbrush Hills, the breakdown of the rate, and we have not received that yet. Um, and now you're saying you want a 3% rate increase. By contract, we're supposed to get notified of that and what's going into that. You started off this discussion with um, you saying that there's new numbers out there. Um, currently on your website, the budget that was posted a month and a half ago is still the same, same thing. So is there another budget out there or is this one that's posted on the public notice, the budget that you're going to use? I believe the committee took the other budget after the last public hearing and went through it and made changes and reductions to some items on there, right? That's correct. That is yeah. Okay, so when, when is that going to be posted for the public to view? Should have been posted up already as far as I understood. Yeah, I, I pulled this 30 minutes ago, so, or an hour ago. It, so with this changes to the budget, it has not been posted for the public. It was given to the board. Um, it will be posted once the board agrees that these are the numbers that they want to go with. Uh, let me let me ask a question. It may be directed towards Ted, um, but to address this gentleman's point, I, I believe that what is required to be posted is the draft budget under consideration. But obviously, the statute can't require that uh, 30 days in advance of the hearing, the budget be posted exactly as it will be passed because the board is allowed to make uh, amendments to that budget before voting on it. Yeah, we had this discussion last <clears throat> the last time. I thought it was cleared, but apparently not. <clears throat> the obligation is to post it initially, which has been done, and then the board between then and December 31st has the ability to uh, amend what the budget committee did to come up with a final budget, and that's where the process is right now. You don't have to start over again and republish each time. You you know as you go through the iterations of reviewing what the budget committee did, you can have a variety of variations. It just needs to be considered, revised, accepted by the board by December 31. 
And I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I read that the last time. Yes. Okay, just again, by contract, Woodman Hills is obligated to give Paintbrush Hills a breakdown of what's going into our rates. We do not have that. If we do not get that, then I do know the board has already voted, my board has already voted to take legal actions and if necessary to go to arbitration. Okay, so and so and, you've and Troy, voted to take legal action. Ted, I'll and, let you speak to that. Troy, all we need is a breakdown of what in your sewer budget is contributing to our rates. That's it. I've asked for that for three months now. I'm not getting that. Whatever I can do, maybe you can get a hold of Becky. Well, that's all we want. We don't okay. want to do anything else. That's all we want. And then once we get that, then we could either support you guys' increase or at least tell tell you why we do not support it. Okay. Um, I believe didn't you guys were notified that the rates were going to go up, correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Last we were, we were October, notified late. That's October correct. 7th or... Well, I can't remember the date. I don't have the sheet in front of me. I think it was October 7th, you said last time? October 8th, and we didn't receive it until October 14th. Okay. And did that notification have a, an explanation as to why the rates were going up or just that the rates were going up? Just that the rates may go up. Okay. And we were hoping that we wouldn't have to raise rates is what the delay has been. Um, and that we can come up. With, we have a sheet that we usually use to give to Paintbrush Hills, but with the rates, you know, with the board and the committee working so hard on those budget numbers, I think we were waiting to provide that to Paintbrush Hills until we had the exact number that we were going to give them. So, Which I, I think you'll agree, Robert, is fair given the fact that uh, uh, the, the breakdown you would have gotten on October 7th would not be accurate at this point. It would be no, no, I totally, different. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with that. And if, if you're looking at your budget and all the different line items on the expense side, really all we're looking for is say, you could say, okay, line, you know, the, the line item 7290 is part of yours or is not part of yours. That's really all we're looking at. And then we can look at those numbers and just make sure it, it corresponds with the, the rate that we're paying. So Rachel, since I'm new, um, is there a way to either change the contract with Paintbrush so it's not in October in the middle of budget season because we may or may not have a rate for them or is our budget normally done by October 1 so Paintbrush normally has it and there's no issues? How do we... We would have How to do we for it. next year's budget prevent this from continuing to be late or not set by the board for next year? We can't go back to October because we're in December, but for next year, are we normally done with our budget by the end of September so they can have it October 1? Well, and, and Stacy, we're not necessarily asking for the full concluded budget by October 1st. What we want to know is prior to October 1st, are you looking at increasing your rates? And so all we need there is a letter, which was sent. Um, it didn't go into the breakdown of what was causing the rates to increase or not increase. It was just a notification saying we're considering raising rates. And then in this meeting or whatever meeting, um, it is required by contract within 30 days of the rate increase that we're notified line item by line item what's going into our rates and why it's increasing. And so if you do not plan on increasing the January rate, you have until the end of December for the February rate to be increased. And, and uh, I go back to what Ed said at the last meeting that as long as it's all done in good faith, I know that I can go to my board and say, hey, look, they're 25 days out but here's the breakdown of what's going into the rate. Here's why the rate that they're increasing is a fair rate. And then our board would probably just say, okay, that makes sense and accept that. And then we move on. Um, the main thing the board wants is a breakdown of the rates. 
me and, and our lawyers have gone back over 10 years of correspondence and there was one letter, well, six years ago, explaining the increase and that's it, not what goes totally into our rate. If Rachel, if you have that, send that to me, that's great. And then we can go from there. But I, I believe date, Mary sent it last year to Leon. Yeah, I'm positive it, that he Okay, did. that's great, that's fine. Can you resend that? I'm sure you can, yeah. He's not here right now, but I'm sure he can. So after we finalize the budget this evening, we could get him a breakdown. And then that would give him 30 days notice to December or January, January 3rd. I had to think about what day it was. <laughs> hey, Robert, just so you understand, I mean, you know, we've got three new board members, um, you know, and we took a look at the budget not that anything was out of line, you know, but we spent a lot of time going into it and dove into the budget um, more than probably more than what prior board members have done. Um, and mainly it's because we were, we're trying to get it right for the district, you know, and since you guys are included in the district, it was important to us to make sure that if we had to do a rate increase, that it was done for the right reason. So just to understand, you know, that's in good faith too, that we took the extra time, not because we wanted vacation, um, or we wanted to spend an extra 200 hours on a budget, right? As a, as a uh, serving board member. So, you know, I know Stacy uh, uh, had a wonderful time doing this, bouncing back and forth between fire district and then uh, coming down and jumping on a call, or you know, meeting at the office and so forth. And then Rachel and the rest of the team have uh, really gone out of their way to kind of get into this in detail with us, um, so that we get we could get more specifics. So. Yeah, I think, you know, after this, we can probably get this buttoned up and, and get it done in good faith. So, okay. Yes, yes, sir. And I, and I totally agree and, and support that. Uh, like I said, the, the biggest frustration myself and the Paintbrush Hills board has is that we have yet to get a breakdown of which line items or GL codes in your budget is um, contributing to um, the wastewater um, processing and that's all we should be paying is a wastewater processing. Absolutely understood and I think Rachel said that she can get that to you um, so we'll finish up on what we've got going on here and then uh, you know um, get it over to you. Okay uh, that's great I look forward to seeing that. Cool. Awesome. Thanks Robert. You're welcome. Any other comments on the bu budget? All right, let's have a budget party. Hey, I would just like to say thank you guys for uh, really delving into that and taking the time to go through that line item by line item. Um, that's probably um, probably the leanest that uh, the district's been able to get that budget in years. Uh, and given the fact that this has been an extremely rough year on a lot of people since COVID kicked off this year, that uh, it's... Uh, I hope it helps by not having to, to make a, uh, a very large uh, rate increase. Uh, I think most of the community is aware of the rate studies and things that in the uh, CPI that a lot of times demand that we raise rates at a rate of two and a half percent on everything per year going forward to stay up with the inflation and costs and things. Um, and so to bring it in under that this year, uh, good job, guys. Good, really good job. And those that served on the committee, thank you. Yeah, hats off to Stacy. I mean, she really, really dove in on this. She put in a majority of the work um, along with Rachel, Jed, and, uh, um, and Jerry. So, you know, nice work. If there are no other comments on the budget. Thank you. And we will close the hearing and we will, I will ask for a motion to approve the 2021 budget as prepared. This I'll, make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the 2021 <laughs> budget. And I'll second that motion. <laughs> and with that, I think this resolution goes with that, correct? Right. Yes. Okay, so we are approving the budget. Take in. 
I said, do we get a Snoopy dance from Rachel? <laughs> so we, we have a motion and a second to approve the 2021 budget. A uh, motion by Stacy, a second by Neil. And that will be approved by resol by vote and resolution. The resolution is number 2020-12-3. Uh, and I won't read the whole thing. Um, is there any further discussion on it? Okay, no. with that, all the roll. All in favor of approving the 2021 budget? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries 4-0. And I will sign and get you this resolution uh, tomorrow, Rachel. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, there are rate increases associated with that budget. Those rate increases are the uh, no rate change for Park and Rec. Uh, uh, One point six percent rate increase in water and a three percent rate increase in sewer. And those are documented in, in the resolution as well as the new rates. So we are on item seven. And that will be resolution number 2020-12-3-1. This goes into effect January 1st, 2021. And that establishes the uh, rates for both residential and commercial water and wastewater within the district within the district and it's uh, uh, parties related to the district uh, can I get a motion to approve that resolution I'll make a motion to approve the 2021 rate schedule I'll second okay, so I have a motion by Stacy and a second by John any other discussion Okay, no other discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries 4 0. All right. Uh, item eight is public comment regarding current board business not on the agenda. Is there any other public comment regarding current board business not on the agenda? Okay, I hear crickets. All right. Um, item nine, other business. Is there any other business to discuss in this special meeting? Next meeting scheduled. Uh, next meeting will be the January meeting, correct, Rachel? Correct. That is January. I don't have my... 21st. Okay, yeah. January 21st be the next No. No, nope, 20. January 28th will be the next regular board meeting. Uh, hopefully there's nothing that comes up before then. Um, with that being said and no other business, uh, thanks everybody for attending. I wish all of you a very happy holidays and a new year, hopefully a much better year <laughs> than this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night. Oh, wait. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> okay, Neil made a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. And John second, any further discussion? <laughs> okay, all in favor of adjourn? Aye. 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 Aye, motion carries, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Aye. Daniel putting us on tonight get better buddy yeah i feel better daniel thanks y'all very much hey daniel give me a call when you get uh when you get a chance all right Ted, thank you why is jerry in the hospital that was a good question <laughs>